Well, it was supposed to be the dawn of a new era in politics, but instead, Change UK is struggling to break through. The party's Brexit spokesperson is Anna Subri. She joins us now. Thank you for being here with us in the studio this morning. Pleasure. Change UK, polling around 3%. Your lead candidate in Scotland defected to the Lib Dems. What, what's going wrong? Well, look, we were formed five weeks ago, if that, actually. I think... I actually think we're doing remarkably well. We, we are up against these big Goliaths. And I think my big takeaway from it all is when I go to the rallies and actually just out and about, I genuinely believe there is a real thirst in our country. Millions of people believe nobody represents them. They want that sensible, centrist, moderate, but progressive politics, accepting that all the political parties are responsible for the breaking of politics. And, and I believe, genuinely believe, we offer the change that the people of this country are desperate to achieve. So why isn't it cutting through? I mean, you say... Well, I know you've got see... the polls here. I mean, you say that you were only set up a few weeks ago, but, I mean, look, the Brexit party were 34%. They're a new party as well. Well, no, that, sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. The Brexit party is just another extension of the Nigel Farage ego party that's been in one way or the other, one guise or another, for the last 20-odd years. I was told in 2015, just before, five days before the general election, that I was going to lose my seat. My majority went up from 400 to 4,200. I was told in 2017, five days before the general election, I was going to double my majority. You know, it went all the way down to 900. So, I mean, you know, polling, the biggest, the most important poll, of course, is what happens on Thursday. And there is all to play for. I really do believe that. If you don't do as well as you hope in the European elections, indeed, if you don't win any seats, is that it for Change UK? Absolutely not, as far as I'm concerned. As I say, I believe there is this real thirst out in the country to get back to that centrist, moderate, progressive form of politics, accepting that British politics is broken, that the, the, the majority of those political parties, in fact, all of them are part of that breaking, and that none of them are actually offering up the solutions that we need to mend the divisions in our country, to sort out Brexit and tackle all the big burning issues that are out there. Um, one person who perhaps doesn't quite share your optimism is one of your candidates, Rachel Johnson. We can have a little look at uh, what uh, Rachel Johnson said. She's your top can candidate in the South West, and she said, Change UK is a terrible name. I'm jumping on another sinking ship with Change UK. We hope it's not sinking, but it's not riding the ocean waves. I think it will be a slow build, a reverse Macron. Well, look, I, I can't speak for Rachel. I mean, she is a Johnson. They have a bit of a history of saying stuff. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I'd rather have her than Boris. It's not very helpful, though, seeing well, as a thinking look, shit. You know, look, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I mean, the most important thing is our strong message, and that is what voters absolutely know and understand. We believe in a people's vote. We believe in remaining in the European Union. We believe the best deal is the current deal that we have with the European Union. And on that, she and I, and in fact everybody else, unlike any other party, are absolutely agreed. Um, she also said that it was a mistake not to ally more closely with some of the other Remain parties. Well, I mean, like we do, Dems. but we work with all these parties. We have been doing that through the People's Vote campaign. That's why I... Yeah, at the beginning, ended... Change UK didn't, did it? No, I, I look back at some of the things that, for example, Chris Leslie has, has no, said. It I was think... pretty dismissive. Saying... No, no, I think we really have to be very honest about this, Sophie. I mean, I took the view that my party, the Conservative Party, had left me. I hadn't left them. Uh, my values, my principles were exactly the same. I'd worked with people like Chris and Chuka, of course, in the People's vote campaign, which was always cross-party, a great way to work, and we'd done that extremely successfully. And when I was looking at what to do next, I looked at, obviously, the Lib Dems. Uh, I looked at just sitting as an independent. So but I knew I had the Lib Dems, more... then? Hmm? You did consider joining the Lib Dems? Well, the first political party I ever joined was the Liberals. And, of course, I worked with the Lib Dems in government, mm. to the point where people like Joyce Winston, uh, I consider a, a friend. I looked at all of that, but I took the very firm view. One, that British politics is broken, and that includes all the parties. And, secondly, the people I actually have more in common with are people like Chuka and Chris and Gavin and Anne, Luciana, Mike Gapes, those are the people, and Joan Ryan, those are the people I actually have more in common with. And we want to create something new. We want to deliver the change that, as I say, I believe millions of people in our country are crying out for. I mean, there's been rumours, hasn't there, that Heidi Allen's actually considering 
a flirtation I, with the Liberal Democrats. I Democrat. find that quite remarkable and staggering. I, mean, I think the most important thing is let's talk about these elections on Thursday. Let's talk about the great issues that are out there. Let's talk about Brexit. Let's talk about what we're going to do as we face what I believe will be a national crisis amounting to an emergency as we go towards the end of October with that cliff edge there. And we heard it in Steve Barclay's interview that he did with you, where he and other government ministers, contenders for this leadership in the Conservative Party are making it very clear that it will be no deal. And in the event of no deal, I'm going to put my country first. And I won't hesitate to say in the event of no deal, we have got to revoke we have got to stop this thing that is destroying British business, that is blighting our politics and is desperately affecting the credibility of this country abroad. I mean, no deal, if you believe um, some of the Conservatives, could happen sooner than we think. Absolutely. Uh, we get Steve Boris Johnson. Barclay was saying that there was going to be a, a decision between revoke or no deal exactly. if that deal doesn't go through. So if the withdrawal agreement fails to pass again in June, will Change UK then back revoke? Oh, if it's a question between no deal or revoke, absolutely. No deal would be catastrophic for this country. Who says that? This government. Its own impact assessments have shown that it would be a catastrophe. It would be profoundly bad for our country. And you've got to put the country's interests first. And in that instance, and actually we have talked about this before, because we had a variety of debates, as you know, and we've had legislation, and I put forward an amendment that said that in the event of these things, revoke has got to be a realistic option. And I would vote to revoke rather for, the, for our country to leave without a deal, which would be a disgrace because it would not be in anybody's interest in this country. And also, I really do believe the majority of British people did not vote for us to leave without a deal. In fact, they were promised we would have a deal before we left. No, Theresa hasn't got a deal. She's got this withdrawal agreement. It is not the deal we were promised. But the idea that we leave without any deal and the threat to peace in Northern Ireland, the damage to jobs, to our economy, is so great. We you... revoke and stop this whole madness. Because that would be the stuff of economic madness. OK. Clearly, not everyone agrees with that assessment. But Anna Subri, thank you very much for coming on the programme this morning.